that one scene is just like crazy intense and the music doesn't help. It was terrifying. And it's supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then when like, the line finally busts through and they had that weird edit where the line didn't have any blood on his face more. Yeah. like, da, Yeah, it's like da. everything's fine. <laughs> I mean, literally, that's what it cuts to, and it, 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 everything is fine after that moment. Hey, guys, it's me, Robbie. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. No, that line was literally like, I'm a really big fan of The Shining. Let's, can, we, can we redo that scene? I have a writing credit. I would like yeah. to do a Shining... <laughs> I would like to do a Shining uh, homage. Thanks. Kubrick is my favorite director. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian, and I'm joined by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hey. And this is The Shit Show. Um, As you will see with each episode of this podcast, I will make the slightest of all connections to an upcoming movie that I can to fit a theme. (laughs) So for the for this current episode. Um, So case in point, this weekend was was supposed to be the release of Scoob, the new Scooby-Doo movie, uh, the one where he like talks way too much. You guys watched the trailer? Yeah. 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 He's just the one where he's speaking in full sentences yeah, and you're like, like, what is this bullshit? Yeah, hey, you're a puppy. Puppies <laughs> I mean, dogs don't dogs either. Don't talk. But, <laughs> yeah. but I mean like my my eighteen month old, she can just say dad, dad, and mama. She's not telling me that, you know, her whole life story. Exactly. So um like all these other movies this whole summer, it's uh being delayed. So seeing as how he's a well behaved dog that can bark. Let's talk about a bunch of big, uncontrollable cats that can roar. Today, we are going to discuss the adventure comedy Roar from 1981. You're right. That is a really thin connection. Yeah. I mean, hey, (laughs) you got to do what you got to do. Grasping at straws over here. (laughs) In these uncertain times, you know, you got to pull it all together somehow. In the power of the lion when he roars like thunder. Roar. Cats. The cat's got a little excitement. Yeah, that's all. Oh. Why if you bring us here, we're just going to die. Roar. And you know what your friends are probably doing to our family right now? They are eating. Shut up. Roar. Have either of you seen or ever heard of this movie? I, I had never heard of this film. Like, just from the name alone, Roar, that sounds like it's going to be more of like a, a horror film. Like... But if it's it's an action comedy, it's adventure, uh, action adventure, uh, adventure comedy. Yeah. Based on what I've seen of this movie, I feel like the term comedy is being used very uh, lightly here, <laughs> very loosely, yeah. very loosely. Yeah, it's, it wasn't so much like funny moments in the movie, but just like it was funny that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was funny that they all lived for us to tell, talk about this movie yes. forty years later. Okay, so some. Details about this movie. Okay. It classified as an adventure comedy. It was coined the most dangerous movie ever made. It was directed by and starring Noel Marshall. He was the dad in in the movie. Mm -hmm. It starred his actual two sons, John and Jerry. I was going to say, that's some really good casting because their afros were (laughs) on point. Exactly the same. Like you said, that's the son. I was like, what? That's the son? Yeah, yeah, I, I, you got confused. Yeah. Like, I was like, I thought he was at the airport. When I, I, when I was, yeah. when I was first watching clips, I was, th- I thought they were the same person. Yeah. I got confused because they kept sw- switching shirts. Sense. It's hard when everyone's just looking like a, you know, cheap version of Bob Ross, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, his actual wife, Tippy Hedren, who was most famous for the birds. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah. Poor Tippy. They're just like, hey, we're going to put you in a movie and just let animals do whatever. But that was whatever. his wife. Like, they were married in mm. real life. Like, hey, uh, that was... Tippy, remember uh, when you uh, got attacked by a bunch of birds? Well, this is going to be on a much larger scale. We're going to put some fucking lions at you. We're going to call this one Cats. Oh, that's Taken? That's Taken? Okay, fine. We'll call it Roar. Um, and then Tippy's actual daughter, Melanie Griffith. 
Oh, I've heard of her. So yeah. the, they're all, that's all family. The, all The cast is entirely all family. Okay, again, is this a documentary? <laughs> what? That, uh, I just, you keep saying like, it's his real family. He's really in Africa. He lived in this house. And I'm like, how is this a fiction film? It's like. It, it makes more sense now that, that they're all family because, I mean, only a father could convince his family to do something that right? stupid. Like, yeah, I saw like some of the other cast members like they must be really like hard up for some cash. Like, hey, yeah, you want to be my movie? Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Like, well, just so you know, there's going to be lions. Oh, OK, are they train lions? No, because uh, I cannot afford train lions. Is there any safety on set? Nah, we're just letting these lions do whatever the fuck they want. All right, I'm in. <laughs> it's funny you say that. We're going to get to that. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, the cinematographer was uh, Jan DeBont, who went on to uh, Love direct her. <laughs> no, him? him. Love him. him. Dutch. Great. He's Dutch. Uh, yeah, he went so on it's to Jan. <laughs> yeah. Please. No, I looked it up. It's Jan. It's Jan, Jan DeBont. Right. And he his first movie was Speed, and he also did Twister. Oh, uh, I love and Speed. Also, he's great, and he also did Speed too. But the, well, yeah. <laughs> classic action comedies, <laughs> <laughs> adventure yes. comedies, Speed, yeah. Yeah. Speed and Twister. Okay, so Roar took eleven years to make. Used around a hundred and fifty wild animals. Eleven years. What? Eleven years. Okay. <sighs> You saw lions, tigers, leopards. And bears, oh my. Yep. <laughs> Knew that was coming. Ah, Knew that was coming. But, um, sh- that's what go. I'm here for, the cheap jokes. Lions, tigers, leopards, cougars, jaguars, and those and two elephants. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mostly lions, though, from what we saw. Yeah. And, and a handful of tigers. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get down to the numbers. But the um, uh, again, the, the simple plot of that is, seriously, a scientist lives in an African house overrun by big cats and his family visits and then insanity just happens. It's seriously like a Scooby-Doo episode where they're just running around Getting Jumping mauled by tigers. <laughs> right. Well, that's, you know what yeah. happens. You know, you leave some food out for a stray, and all the other strays are going to come. Like that's he just 150 left, other. He strays. just left. He just left out a zebra leg, and yeah. you know all that's the how other you strays. End up. Yep. But you said 11 years. Is that like from like pre-production, like yeah. to release? Because yeah. like I'll, I don't know, Matt. We'll, okay. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get that. Um, I also have questions about the 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, the. As you saw in that um, trailer, the re-release tagline was, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. 70 cast and crew members were. Oh, my God. Okay. So, um, backstory. So, uh, Marshall and Hedron are mm-hmm. married, and they went to uh, a plantation in Africa, and it was overrun by a pride of lions. And so, they suddenly got this idea of a movie. Like, that would be a very interesting movie. So, (laughs) the first draft was completed in 1970. First called Lions, and (laughs) so original. Okay, but then was changed to Lions, Lions, and more Lions. That's the best. (laughs) Holy holy crap! That's that's (laughs) I like that one the best. They should have stuck with that one. Um, they uh, the attempted theme of this movie. Is preservation of animals. Hmm. Okay. Did that come across to you guys? I mean, yeah, I guess because the animals were like just fucking everybody up. Yeah, no, they were preserving their own the, lives themselves. by eating Marshall's children. Yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't you say that just like the sheer terror of those animals was kind of counter to, to the theme? Oh, was there like lion panic after this where people like, oh, lions are coming for my family. <laughs> is it like quicksand in movies? Like, hey, oh, yeah. I saw quicksand in that movie. You gotta <laughs> yeah. watch out for quicksand. quicksand. Or how like Jaws like created the fear of sharks. Yeah. 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 Like people are like scaring their children. If you're not good, lions are gonna come and, and <laughs> maul you in the nighttime. Yeah. Um, okay, so they wanted to to do it with 20 to 30 lions for the film. That sounds reasonable. Hmm. They couldn't get any animal trainer to agree to the project. That's smart. Also, makes sounds. sense. Yeah, because yeah. right. like it's whenever you see in movies where they 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 have like one lion or whatever, it's just like there's so much training and there's so much like safety on set just in case that animal freaks out. Right. So they wanted twenty to thirty. That seems yeah, stupid. I don't know much about training lions and tigers, but from what I understand. <laughs> Tigers are like some of the hardest animals to train for a production. 
I haven't heard that. Uh, the only reason I know that is because I recently watched the Swiss Family Robinson, which <laughs> that clip that you showed us, like the the, the trailer for the re-release, it's like a is, snuff version. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Swiss Family and that in Swiss Family Robinson, they were violating like animal rights stuff all over the map. Like, they didn't have them at that time, you know, like right. Peter wasn't stepping in or anything like that. But they just like were messing with all sorts of animals. Yeah. And so when I saw the trailer for this, like you know, it's, it's the the, it's the Swiss Family Robinson, except you know the opposite end. That's that's why I was thinking. That's what I read that tigers are really difficult to train. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> so you like, imagine having multiple, yeah, right? and lions Plus with the lions yeah. with them, right? And just throw an elephant in there because why not? <laughs> I liked uh, in that trailer or in the clips that you showed us though, when the, the elephant just took their boat. Like, I just kept thinking, I was like, "This is mine now." <laughs> <laughs> and like that clip, that scene goes uh-huh. on for ten minutes Jeez. of him just trampling it and then like the lions watching it, it seemed like to me that they just set a bunch of a bunch of cameras and like okay just go yeah yeah just figure it out and like we'll cut yes. it we'll cut it together later yes well that, yes that uh, we'll, we'll get we're getting to that also fun fact that elephant had an uncle who was a producer so that's <laughs> nepotism <laughs> fucking hollywood man. right <sighs> so i imagine um, like how the phone call went is no marshall's like hey animal training inc can I get 20 to 30 lions for my movie? And then it was just like, <laughs> click, click. Yeah. every single time. Yeah. And he called back with a different name. This is Hans <laughs> Marshall. I need 20 to 30 lions. Like, yeah. Joel Schnarchel. <laughs> Sir, stop calling. Stop calling us. We know it's you. <laughs> um, so because they couldn't get the, the lions, the family began hoarding lion and tiger cubs to raise as their own. That sounds this, despicable. Again, this is, this in is, Los Angeles. How is this not a documentary? <laughs> like, I just, everything you keep telling me, I'm like, it's a documentary. It's yeah. their real family. It's their real names. They're hoarding lion cubs now. Yeah. So wait, was this was filmed in LA or did they ship them all okay. overseas? So so no, this um, the whole film is made in LA or it's like north of LA. Mm-hmm. It's uh, some wild or like so Burbank. Some... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 so the uh, no, it's just like some unused land uh, north of LA. Um, there are some exterior shots actually filmed in Africa. But it's mostly filmed in L.A. But their houses, they were raising the, the, the lions and tigers inside of their house in, like, middle of Sherman Oaks, L.A. Like, just in their house, in their Jeez. mansion. So Marshall, Marshall was um, a producer on The Exorcist. And okay. that movie was huge. Yeah. Huh. And so he made a lot of money from that. And then, you know, she was in Hitchcock movies. Right. So... Um, so they had they had a lot of money. That's how he decided to spend it. He thought that was a good investment. <laughs> yes, yeah, cool. Just a shit ton of cats. Just well, thirty glass. years later, they had a re-release. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. who's laughing now, Jenny? Who's laughing yeah. now? <laughs> so this was before the Endangered Species Act of 1973. So this is why they were able to just hoard these animals. Yeah. Hedron looks back at this um, in her memoir and says, "We were stupid beyond belief." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no shit, Tippy. <laughs> like, can you imagine just like adopting one, just one lion, one tiger? Like, like as it grows up, like that thing is just gonna get huge. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, there, there's no domesticating that thing. As <laughs> yeah. much as you think like it loves you, that fucker will turn on you in a second. It's in a and, second. Yeah, and it's gonna gnaw your face off. Look, we talked about already. Like, domestic cats are already that way. Like, yeah. those things are terrorists. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They yeah. will hold you hostage in your own home. So just like take a regular cat and what an asshole that thing is, and then times it by like fifty. Yeah, no. If you live alone and you have a cat and you die, that cat's one hundred percent gonna res- eat, you. Eat, you, eat you. Well, and also it's probably responsible. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Like, the cat did it. Okay, so during this time, um, they had to move upstate into this little preserve that they created. And they acquired a bunch of birds, like storks and flamingos and stuff like that, Mm. which you can see in the movie. Um, Two elephants, four leopards, two jaguars, ten cougars, nine black panthers, which I found, discovered that a black panther is actually just a leopard, just colored differently. Mm. Didn't know Interesting. That. Um, I learned that from Tippy Hedren from her uh, her preserve, uh, a video all about it. Anyway, Tippy's big book of cats. 
It's a sequel to her big it's book of birds. <laughs> 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 in her biography, oh, my, tr- my trouble with animals. <laughs> Sorry, I got that title wrong. It was Tippy's Big Book of Big Cats. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, 26 tigers. That's too many. And 71 lions. Oh, my goodness. That's 71. Beyond. That's beyond. I think that's more than like... Disney has at Animal Kingdom. But yeah. it's like they wanted 20 to 30. For the, the 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 movie, and that that's what they amassed. Like, why did why did you why didn't you stop? Well, let's be let's be well, honest it's here. It's like, like most people who yeah with cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the like crazy cat lady, yeah. cat lady from the Simpsons, just yeah. talking cats like that was them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is before the Endangered Species Act, right? Like, like, can we just like you know say the one good thing out of this is that maybe they helped like grow the population of those lions. So that's the end of the story, actually. Oh, so okay. You're, you're getting there. All right. Um, and and they got one tigon, which is a male tiger breeding with a female lion. Is that yeah possible? Yeah. yeah. The the opposite is true. A female tiger and a male lion makes a liger. Um, I feel like this Hogel, is just like some Hogel science Zoo. fiction bullshit. Hogel Zoo had one. It was his name is Shasta, and it was mm. stuffed. Cute. And it was in Hogel Zoo <laughs> for years. Yes. I remember Shasta. I remember him. So that's a tigon. So they okay. got one of those, and they turned down a hippo. Okay, so let me get this straight. They've got in the ballpark of a hundred ish animals. In like fucking Pasadena, where are they? Northern California? Yeah, it's it's the not, Bay it's, Area. <laughs> it's, it's the middle of San Francisco. <laughs> in the, this is how in San the Francisco Redwoods. got its start. This is like Planet of the Apes, but right. it's Planet of the Lions. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure about the exact location. Somewhere in up, but... California. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So and everyone was just like, it's fine. Yeah. Why not? Like so, but but as they amassed all these animals, they had to move them up to this like preserve that they basically created. Nuts. Um, So they built the house set, which was built with um, fourteen telephone poles. That was the the um, the supporting weight because they knew that they would have a hundred and fifty big ass cats. Yeah. Oh, to like hold the house up? I was waiting for like what the poles were for. No, that was. Like as the support structure of the house. Yeah, like the load bearing walls, 14 of them. Jeez. Wow, okay. Yeah. um, The rest of the house was apparently built of like styrofoam and sugar glass. (laughs) Yeah, it was. Those cats (laughs) fucked that house up. Okay. So, yeah, that was to withstand the weight of the cats. Um, The surrounding area involved planting thousands of native African plants, and they dammed the creek to make a lake. So that lake that's surrounding the house is like man-made. Okay, so now they're like depriving California of much needed water and they're introducing invasive plant species. These guys are like fucking with nature. Hard. All without the proper building code permits. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't think those telephone poles are part of the yeah, the but code. Those were, those were stolen 100%. Like <laughs> like some neighborhood is without telephone. <laughs> and they couldn't call anyone to complain about it. <laughs> Okay, so film, filming was considered improvisational. Because yeah, they yeah. had no idea what the cats were going to do. Again, how is this not a documentary? Okay. I, no, you haven't said nothing that they, is convincing me said, otherwise. They've, they said that basically every day of filming came down to one usable shot. Jeez. So a documentary. <laughs> yeah. Um, all the fear you see throughout the movie, like it's genuine. Yeah, because they're surrounded by a fuck ton of yeah. giant cats. Yeah, um, that could murder you at any time. Melanie second. Griffith, like her, like her shoulders, like yeah, we're getting like, like bits wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. Um, She's wearing nothing. They're like, he's like, oh, honey, for this shot, we're gonna need you to like run around in your swimsuit top. Are you comfortable with that? <laughs> no, it. dad. No, dad. <laughs> what kind of father are you? Well, keep in mind, keep in mind these these the 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 actors were the same people living in the house with all these. The animals and and so the idea was that like because they were raised the the, the cats they would treat them as one of their own yeah. and they wouldn't be hostile. I mean, they're, I mean, uh, I'm, based on what we saw, like I could see that, like yeah, the, like, no lion was actually going to be like tearing into anybody's flesh to actually like eat them. It was more like in a playful way. It seemed, yeah. yeah but, but at they, the same but time, they don't like, know like the, your the strength of your skin. Yeah, yeah. No, this this shit. I'm covering my bones. <laughs> Just shredded. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like a lettuce wrap. It's as thin as the walls of that house. Is yeah. how <laughs> <Yeah. it> is. <laughs> 
just like the tissue paper walls. Uh, so filming took five years and they could only shoot between April and October to October because they wanted to maintain that it was, I mean, the movie is essentially a day, right? So they had to maintain the look. And so when the leaves changed, they had to just stop shooting. Are the are his kids like just rapidly like aging over the series? Like, well, she was fifteen when she started, and now she's twenty. And like, yeah. she was the youngest. Adult. She was the youngest on it, and she was um, around just under twenty when it started. Yeah, I feel like the di- the difference from like twenty to twenty five. Like, you're gonna notice that. Yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah it's weird. I had hair at twenty, <laughs> not at twenty five. <laughs> exactly, I totally different. I did yeah? We'll just put you in an afro. Where no <laughs> yeah, one will ever be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so they legitimately just—they're like, "This is our house now. We live here for five years." Well, they didn't. They didn't live there. Okay. They they set up um like a, a fencing around the whole area to keep all the cats in. And they built like kind of a pseudo studio there with like fridge lockers so they could have like refrigerate all the meat. Five okay. years? <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is this is where it starts getting a little sad. Aww. Starts. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, beyond the animal issues, um, they had two floods, one that was 10 feet high. Oh, my goodness. And just wiped out the set. So at that point, it knocked over the fences. And 15 lions and tigers escaped. Oh, man. And um, escaped the compound. And one of them, Robbie, the one that was <laughs> the, the starring. The, <laughs> the, 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 it's the fucking the, Manson family the dark, compound. Yeah, yeah, the dark maned <laughs> Yeah, the, the, dark, the one that had like starring Robbie as yeah. Robbie, right? Oh, Robbie. Did they, all, did they all have names? <gasps> oh, no, really? Yeah. So he, he was, the sheriffs found him and had to put him down. Oh. So they got a stand-in lion to... <laughs> They died as main Too black. Soon. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> this movie was released four years before I was born. I think Too Soon's okay. Okay. Um, it took eight months to rebuild after that flood. And then as soon as they finished it, there was a huge forest fire. And luckily, it did not touch anything. Okay. They, 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 all the, and all the animals were fine. I Except mean, Other Robbie. than the one that got shot. Except Robbie. Yeah. 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 Robbie. Poor, Robbie. Poor Robbie. There were frequent crew walkouts. Like oh yeah! No just, shit. They would just. I'm about to walk out of this podcast. <laughs> That's how mad I am about this I wouldn't this even walked in. I would have been like, "Lions, peace out. <laughs> no, no, Good luck." Wait, wait. I... how many lions? <laughs> well, it was originally going to be twenty to thirty, but uh, I said, got... "Fuck it," and went 150. <laughs> So m- multiple crew walkouts because like one thing would happen where like they were all on a platform filming from a distance and then the cats would jump on it and it would collapse the, the platform and they'd be all in the water with all the lions attacking them or playing with them. Right. Crazy stuff like that. Um, they lost financing halfway through the film. Yep. And so Marshall, the Marshall family sold their four houses and oh, other boo-hoo. properties to fund the rest of the movie. And like I said, they like they were making a ton of money. This was very much a passion project for them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Like I've but had like, passion projects and I've known when to quit. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like they were victims of like the sunk cost fallacy where they're just like, we've come too far. We got to just keep no, doing this no, shit. Really? Like, and no, they no, were, bro. that was because they felt so passionate about what they were doing that they felt like they wanted to show how gentle these creatures are mm, yeah just like so a, edit it like a slasher movie you <laughs> yeah, dumbasses. what okay so that's what they thought they were doing so in their minds they're like oh my god we're so amazing we're making this beautiful movie about lions and how amazing and gentle mm-hmm. lions are and we're gonna like help preserve lions for future generations and then they're like just kidding it's a slasher movie roar yeah like that one scene is just like crazy intense and the music doesn't help it was terrifying and it's supposed to be a comedy <laughs> yeah, yeah and then like, the line finally busts through and they had that weird edit where the line didn't have any blood on his face more yeah. like let the yeah it's like, everything's fine don't worry about it i mean literally that's what it cuts to and it, it, it everything is fine after that moment <laughs> hey guys it's me robbie i'm just messing with you <laughs> yeah no that line was literally like i'm a really big fan of the shining let's can we get, can we redo that scene i have a writing credit i would like yeah. to do a shining <laughs> I would like to do a shining uh, homage. Thanks. Kubrick is my favorite director. <laughs> now, Classic did, Robbie. Did all the animals have names? Do we know? I, I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm assuming. Like, I think that's what he, when he's saying it in the movie, <laughs> like he's like saying all their names. Like, I'm assuming that they know. I imagine all. it's much like in the Lego movie when uh, the cats are all walking in front of him and he's like, <laughs> Fluffy, Fluffy Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Carl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just Robbie one, Robbie two, Robbie. Robster, <laughs> Rob Senior, Robbie Junior, Robert, yeah. Roberto. Yeah. Got really creative. Roberto. <laughs> Um, okay, so okay, so <laughs> continuing. Okay, so this is like okay, about seventy people of the cast and crew were severely injured. Jeez, of course they were. All right, and here's a list of the most severe ones. So Marshall, the director, writer, that that main the main guy who's like not even there for <laughs> main, like most movies. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but it up. <laughs> uh, all right, so he took the brunt of it. Because he was like always was like dumbass. I mean you saw that moment where he like those two lions are fighting and he's like I'm gonna get in the middle of this yeah like what the fuck are you doing, um so he suffered many puncture wounds from claws and teeth uh, he got blood poisoning and then developed gangrene Ugh. because of like the saliva on the the lion's teeth um you Ugh. can you can see his actual blood in multiple scenes Debont oh the cinematographer yes, yes. was almost completely scalped. Holy shit! Whoa. Needed at 120 stitches. Jeez, and this is he this never is the... he never faltered from this. And movie. like no one f- gave up on the. I yeah right. What and like I think that okay I'm gonna continue this but uh, yeah we'll go back to that. Um so Hedrin, um was scratched and bitten multiple times obviously but what that scene where she gets picked up by the elephant um the elephant like mm-hmm. threw her off her back and then she broke her leg. That elephant never forgot that moment. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. (laughs) That elephant's dead now. Back to Melanie Griffith. Anyway, Melanie Griffith. (laughs) Uh, She left the film uh, saying, Mother, I don't want to come out of this with half a face. Mm. Yeah, smart. Was convinced to come back and then was mauled, needing facial reconstruction surgery, almost lost one of her eyes. Jeez. That's her okay. livelihood. That's how she. That's her money maker. <laughs> yeah, as that's an how she. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you gotta have a face <laughs> if you want to be on camera. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you don't. Um, the assistant director was bit on the scalp, chest, thigh, throat, and jaw, and a lion tried to pull his ear off, and he needed five hours of surgery. Jeez, man, this is depressing. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm. No, again, no one was killed. I. I bet some of other people than probably, Robbie. I bet some people were probably wishing like they were dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the trauma. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And so John Marshall, he's the the older son in it, the one that looks just like his dad. Um, Afro. He, the the Afro kid. He kind of continues to talk about the movie um, openly, and and in he, therapy. <laughs> yeah, and he does mention that he he still like he's like don't get me wrong, he still have nightmares about this. Yeah. Um, he needed fifty six stitches after a lion tackled him and bit him on the on his head. And I have some quotes from him. The plot isn't brilliant because it wasn't very complicated. And the lions and tigers share co-writing credits. They just kept changing the script. Yeah. Again, um, documentary. Sorry, yeah, everybody. I, I, I really, is. I really, I think that like at some point they should have just turned it into it. Yeah. Right? The making of a failed movie. Or like this is yeah. what happens when an insane family of Hollywood types go totally nutso and decide to just get a bunch of big cats. So John Marshall later said, uh, this film should have never been made. Right. It was dangerous. It was stupid. Right. It was insanity. Yes. Yes. Don't get me wrong. I had a wonderful time. No, you didn't. But it was stupid. (laughs) No, you didn't. Uh, because the film was made non-union, because they couldn't get anybody to work on it. Oh, there's like... not a lion's union? <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lion? They didn't un- they Did they unionize? Not unionized yet. Well, those this, are the, those are the movie... guys that Marshall called and was like, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the union. <laughs> right. uh, because of that and some other legal matters, uh, the film was not released in the United States. Oh, mm. But it was so re-released in it was, 2015. It was released kind of in throughout 1981 in Australia, England, Japan, and Germany. Mm. It cost 17 million, and by today's standards, that's about 47 million. Cool. And made two million. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So about five million today. So big, big loss. Hedron and Marshall divorced the following year. Mm. Of course they did. There's documentary footage of her actually saying. Like, uh, he he was crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. You can see that it is a like stark view of like a man slowly going insane. Like, you can even tell from the twelve minutes that you showed us, this is a portrayal of like real mental illness. Like, yeah. he's yeah. like hoarding animals. He's like thinks he's one of them almost. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's endangering the lives of his family. Like, 
they needed a, some. They needed an intervention, like it's, yeah. hardcore. It's his descent into madness. Like he wanted to be a lion. <laughs> he wanted his family to be lions. Seriously, guys, yeah. we're one with the pride. Yeah, we are the pride. <laughs> we're the martial pride. He's like he's like rolling on the ground with like a bloody hand, like cooing and like baby talking the fucking lions. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, it's okay. And then like one of them's like trying to drown him in the lake, like pushing him under. Wow. It's just insanity. Marshall never directed again. But was it like? Oh, I that was really I mean, bad. Probably, I should have never directed again. Or was it like my life's work is complete? It was probably a, a big thing about how much he was trying to get financing and like just blowing through money, and he uh, was just kind of crazy. And like and that's yeah. what he, after all that time and money, that's what he came up with. You know, a movie that is relatively plotless. Right, right. Yeah. And it's just it is just like documentary footage of cats ruining a, a house. <laughs> so uh, in in 2015, Alamo Draft House or Draft um, under their label, the Draft House Films, uh, bought the rights to the movie <laughs> and had the first actual screening in the United States, roar. like official. And that was their trailer. <laughs> That's the amazing. Roar. That's, That's a crazy. beautiful trailer. Um, Classic. Hedron did not approve of the marketing because mm. it does. Uh, uh, it's misleading. Like yeah. it says that no animals were hurt when they actually were. Um, uh, that uh, That's right. Robbie got shot. Robbie, yeah. Robbie got shot. Mm. Justice for Robbie. I yeah. know. Hashtag justice for Robbie. Yeah. They made it look like a grindhouse movie. Yeah. 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 And then, I mean, that's, I mean, you watch it and that kind of feels like that. It's, it's definitely one of those, uh, it's like so bad. It's good kind of in, in a mm-hmm. sense. Um, but it, it's, it's almost oh. indescribable. Yeah, because it, it's like there's like I said, there's no plot and it just kind of goes nowhere, and you just watch all this madness. How happen. long is this movie? Uh, like an hour and twenty four minutes or something. It's about okay. an hour and twenty three minutes too long. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like well, when you but told a me, great hour and twenty four minutes documentary. Yes, I mean that's. I kind of want to remake this movie, but do it right. Are you thinking more lions? <laughs> I think on a smaller scale, but like have the same amount of animals. <laughs> But have them just be like cats. a motorhome, like yeah. kittens <laughs> with yes. 150, yeah. 150 kittens. We'll call it meow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think like really the, I the the theme that they were trying to go for, which was like these animals are beautiful and wonderful, and it's just kind of like most of that movie is terrifying. Yeah. Like you're watching it, going, oh my god. Oh my God, that person's going to get hurt. You know, sweetie, I was thinking about maybe getting a lion, but I saw Roar. <laughs> I don't think I want one anymore. Um, there's no, there was, because it wasn't released in the un- United States and because it was 1981, there's not really reviews of the movie at the time. Mm. Um, nowadays, it's like 70s on Rotten Tomatoes, but mostly because it's like a cult classic. Hit Fix says it's like Walt Disney went insane and shot a snuff version of Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that, like that, those are the reviews that like people like it's, it's so fun to watch. It's an mm. enjoyable, even though it's a terrible movie. Right. I would watch it. I mean, I would be questioning my life the whole time, but I would watch it. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's like two hours. You're never going to get back. <laughs> hour and 20. Uh, hour and 24 <laughs> minutes. And I came back. It felt like two hours. <laughs> Just that 12 minute the cut 12 felt like two, like two hours. hours. <laughs> um, how was it received by lion audiences? How did they feel about it? Was was a positive? nine out of ten roars? Yeah, <laughs> in the Lion Times. Yeah, <laughs> Siskel Fake and news. Roarbert. Yeah. <laughs> two, two two non-opposable thumbs up. Yep. <laughs> so okay, so the set. Um, where that set is is now the you shum- can't so you can't see his air quotes yeah yeah the, the set the set <laughs> the set is now the Shambhala Preserve, uh, established by the Roar Foundation. Uh, that Hedron set up and still oversees. That's pretty cool. So that's okay, that's okay. that ho- that whole area is just dedicated to like rescuing big cats. And so something good came out of this yeah. movie. Yeah, Tippy was like, you know what? I'm fucking done. I'm divorcing this asshole that made me make this movie. I'm gonna make things right for the big cats. Yeah, I'm gonna give them their land back. Yeah, there's a bench dedicated to Robbie. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> There's like it's a, it's the a, Robbie a, the Lion Memorial College Scholarship <laughs> Fund for yes. for low income lions. Oh, well, good. That'll pay for the lion's share. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, lastly, uh, the movie has been kind of coined the most expensive home movie ever made. Sure. Yeah. 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 Because it is a, it is essentially a documentary. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm 
I am changing my vote from documentary to home movie. That is more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. like, they're not even, like, trying to tell a story about the lions. They're just like, this is our house. This is our life. Lions are here. Yep. Put up a camera. They tried to submit it to America's Funniest Home Videos, and Tom Bergeron <laughs> said no. no. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, guys, it's way too long. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to throw any last minute thoughts on Roar? No, I mean, like, uh, so you said the cinematographer, he went on to direct Speed, right? Mm -hmm. I love yes. that movie. Like, I'm just trying to find the silver lining in all of this. So, but, yeah, he never. A preserve. A preserve. A yes. preserve. 100%. And okay, that's a, a yeah. guy that directed two really decent action movies. Yes. So, but you said that he never directed again. Was it like no one would ever give him money because they're like, that's the. That's the cat guy. That's the crazy <laughs> that's, lions that's guy. The, that's the lions, lions, and more lions guy. <laughs> you By are, the way, great hey. script. I don't know what that movie was, but that script was awesome. Someone's like, hey, kid, you're going to be a star to those lions <laughs> that wrote that movie. <laughs> lions, lions, and lions, you hired. <laughs> was all this trouble worth it? Five years in the making, lots and lots of injuries, See, I'm torn on this one because there's a part of me that's like, no, this movie's bullshit. Why would you need to collect that many lions <laughs> to make a bullshit movie that yeah. had no plot? But then, you know, we got the lion preserve out of it. So I guess like their hoarding cats ended up preserving cats. Yeah, but at the same time, like if they didn't make the movie, would those cats have like really had that worse off a of life? Or would they have gone somewhere else to another preserve? Or maybe even not even gotten into yeah. California? You know, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess they could have. They were kind of collecting them from people who shouldn't have them. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. So, was it? Were they like fostering lions? Were they like going in and like finding lions from sad homes and like, right. well, you can come live with us and make a movie. But once they reach adult age, they have to leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, and what Noel Marshall? He got he got you know fucked up with his face and and like his arm and things like that so i mean like if it's if, if we have a a wonderful uh lion preserve and all that we lost was like you know griffith's face and, and noel marshall's <laughs> arm or whatever i you know that's a win in that's my book true. although there are probably easier ways to create a lion preserve yeah. just like start it like, right. you don't need to make you don't need to cause a problem that you then have to solve basically it's true yeah there you go yeah i, I feel like if if someone died during the production I guess Robbie did. I mean, how many lion lives are worth a human life? I mean, I'm not that guy to make to make that judgment call, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know the answer. I mean, for me, what's it the was ratio? What's, yeah. the ratio? what's the ratio? What's the yeah. mathematical equation? How many lions had to die to entertain you, Clint? <laughs> you know what? Uh, apparently, one, and I wasn't even that entertained. So, I don't think it was. I don't think it was worth it. Not worth it. Poor Robbie. Rest in peace. <laughs> 